Hey guys, welcome to a quick update video. Last month Adobe released a new version for Adobe After Effects which is version 14.2 which is the April 2017 release. The new version includes some really cool features like the essential graphics panel and the motion graphic templates which is something that Adobe has been missing for a long time and I'm pretty excited about this feature coming in. Lumetri color and Lumetri scopes which are great for color correcting and color grading your footage. There's a much smarter way of referencing layers across different effects which now saves you time not having to pre-compose a whole bunch of stuff. There's a camera de-blur effect which allows you to reduce blurry frames for camera stabilization and camera tracking. And then a whole bunch of other effects have been GPU accelerated. In this quick video I want to run you through some of the main new features in Adobe After Effects and show you some of the cool stuff that you can do with them. Let's first talk about the essential graphics panel and motion graphic templates. Here I have a very simple composition of an animated lower third. All it is is a couple of text elements that come into the screen and a little bit of like a turbulent displacement wave that I've animated through in the background. It's nothing really terribly complicated. Now obviously all of the settings for the text, the colors, the effects, they're all buried inside the layers within my composition. So for example I could change the color of this background. Obviously because this is a shape layer I could just select my background and change the color up here. But let's say I want to drill into this a bit more. I could kind of drill this open, come into the contents, maybe expand the rectangle and the fill in here and then you can have different rules and tweak all sorts of settings like the opacity, maybe bring this down a little. Maybe we'll change the color to more of a dark purple, which is more After Effects like. But let's say I also wanted to affect the way the waves work in the background. So I can come into my text and wave comp, which contains two layers. The top one is just the text element itself. And the bottom one is just these turbulent displacement waves. So I can come into my waves, effect controls, turbulent displays. For example, I could jack up the amount just to make those waves a little bit more prominent. And then maybe I wanted to change the text as well so I can go into my text elements comp and inside here I can obviously then make changes to these text or change the font or the size or anything else I really want. So that way I can kind of control the style and look of my animated lower third. However I had to do quite a bit of work to dig through all of this to find all of the properties to change and it's just a little bit tedious. So the essential graphics panel actually has two purposes. Purpose number one is for effect organization. So let's bring up the essential graphics panel by coming into the menu, selecting window and then opening up the essential graphics panel. Let me drag this over a little bit just to make a bit more space. In the essential graphics panel you can give your current working project or your current working hierarchy a name. So let's call this tutorial. You then select the composition to be your master composition and any effect within this composition or any nested composition, so within this entire composition hierarchy can be brought into the essential graphics panel. And the way to do that is really easy. So let's say the color of this background is something that we would want to change frequently. So we could open up the background and come into contents rectangle into the fill and this color. But what I can do now, I can actually grab this property and drag it into my essential graphics panel. Just let go and it's now available in my graphics panel without me having to dig into this. Furthermore, I can come into my text and wave comp, select my waves layer and let's expand this. Unfortunately, you can't drag the effects from the effects control panel. You do have to go into your layers and expand these. So let's go waves, effects, turbulent displays and let's grab the amount and drop that in here. Maybe we'll rename this property as well to wave amount and the color. Let's call this background color. Let's come up again. Let's dive into the text layers themselves and in here again we're going to have to expand these. So this is for the title. Let's expand the text and let's drag the source text property into our essential graphics panel. Let go. Let's call this one title and let's do the same for the subtitle. Yeah, it's already text source text. Let's drag that into essential graphics and call it subtitle. So now I have essentially extracted these four properties into my essential graphics panel for my template called tutorial underneath this essential graphics panel composition. The cool thing is that I can now at any point in time without having to dig into any of these layers make changes here. So for example 
And there you go, I've immediately updated the title of this text element that sits within an SD composition through this Essential Graphics panel. I can change the background color really easily to anything I want. I can change the subtitle or the wave amount and everything will automatically update within my composition hierarchy. Because for any project that I work on, I keep referring back to the same effect properties and I keep having to dig through my compositions to find the elements that I need. Using the Essential Graphics panel just for organizing your effects for me is probably the biggest win out of this update. Just having this interface is great. So thank you Adobe. This is really useful. On top of that, you can now export this composition as a motion graphics template. You can export this to your local drive or to Essential Graphics or to team projects so you can share it with your team. And these templates can then be brought into Premiere Pro. And within Premiere Pro, you can simply drop them into your sequence. And with these templates, all of the properties that you have added into the Essential Graphics panel will be available within Premiere Pro. So people can easily tweak your color, your wave amount, title, subtitle, any other property you add into here. So this really takes this whole concept of the live text templates, which was just not working very well. It just takes this to the next level and allows you to create some really complex, cool animated compositions within Adobe After Effects, export them as motion graphics templates, and then use them within Premiere Pro. The next new exciting feature in version 14.2 of Adobe After Effects is the addition of the Lumetri scopes and the color correction effects. Let me close down the Essential Graphics panel and let's go over into the next composition. This shot is from our recently released visual effect short film. It's a bomb. If you haven't seen it yet, highly recommend that you go check it out. Now, the shot itself already looks pretty good, but one thing After Effects has always really lacked is color correction and color grading tools. Now, under the effects and presets, yes, you can find things like curves and a whole bunch of effects that do help you color correct and color adjust, but there was never any good solutions, always kind of tedious and you can't really see what you're doing from a technical point of view. So now with 14.2, you have Lumetri scopes and the Lumetri color effect. For that, let's come up into window and let's bring up Lumetri scopes. If you've never worked with these types of scopes before, they may seem rather scary, but they're actually really easy to use. I highly recommend you go check out my color correction tutorial using Premiere Pro where I show you how these scopes work and how easy they are to use to really make your footage pop. In essence, all they do is display the current color information for your current frame so you know exactly what you're doing when you're color correcting or color grading. Now, on top of the Lumetri scopes, obviously you also have the Lumetri color effect. So let's select our layer. Let's come into our effects and presets panel and under color correction, we will find the Lumetri color effect. Let's apply that to our layer. Again, let me reshuffle everything a little bit so it's easier to see. The Lumetri color effect really is an all-in-one tool. It allows you to correct any issues with your footage and apply cinematic styling to your clip to really make it look impressive. I'm not going to go through everything right now. If you do want a separate tutorial on all of the Lumetri tools, leave me a comment down below. So you can essentially just come in here, add some basic correction, like we can white balance it, we can bring the brightness back up. Um, under the creative tab, you have a whole bunch of styles and looks that you can apply, which is really cool. So for example, you could apply a, like a bleach HDR look. It looks kind of cool. Tweak the intensity. Um, you've got curve tools, color wheels for color adjustments, secondary color correction, which is actually really important. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. And then you can add vignettes and other cool styling. So this is kind of our final footage. And all we've done just apply the Lumetri color effect and gone through a few tweaks. And then we can use the scopes to make sure that everything we're doing kind of makes sense in the end. The next thing I'm really excited about is the way Adobe changed how you reference layers within an effect. Let me quickly reset my workspace and let's move on to the next composition. Here's a short clip I took in Shinjuku, Japan. And let's say we wanted to use a set matte effect to apply a matte to this layer. Let's create a new solid. Let's call this one matte layer. Let's grab the pen tool and let's just draw a pretty simple mask onto this. Doesn't have to be fancy, just something that we want to use as a matte. Now, if I select my base footage and search for the set matte effect and apply that to that layer, this one at the top allows me to select a layer to use as a matte. And in previous versions of Adobe After Effects, this will be a single dropdown. So all I can do is select the actual layer. So I can select my matte layer and if I hide my matte layer, 
absolutely nothing will happen because my matte layer, only the source will get used, the mask won't get applied. So it's still just a solid black layer as it's being used by the set matte effect. And the way to usually work around this is to pre-compose this matte layer with the mask so that you get a single visual layer which has an alpha channel and then that you can use in your set matte effect. However, in Adobe After Effects 14.2, any control and thank you Adobe for changing that everywhere and not just in a selected number of effects. Everywhere where you can now select a layer you have two options. For one you select the layer and then on the right hand side you can determine whether to use the source of that layer so before any masks or effects are being applied with the masks applied or with masks and effects applied. And the cool thing is that I can now select for example masks and this layer, this matte layer will have its mask applied and the output of that then becomes the input to the set matte effect. The cool thing is I can also apply effects onto this matte layer. So for example, let's apply a turbulent displace effect to this matte layer. Let's quickly visualize it and let's pump this up a little bit more so it's nice and twisted. And let's hide it again, come back to our base layer. And now in the set matte effect, take matte layer from Yes, we want to use our matte layer, but not only the masks, we want to use masks and effects. And now the output of the rendered and masked out layer is going to be fed into the set matte effect. So you can do some really, really cool things and you don't have to pre-compose over and over and over just for these simple things. And finally, the very last thing I want to show you is the camera de-blur effect. So here again, it's the exact same clip that I have walking through Shinjuku in Japan. And one thing you may notice is that a few of the frames as I'm walking around are rather blurry. So right here, you can see the camera kind of had a few shakes in them and it's a bit jittery. So usually you would apply a warp stabilizer effect, which I have already done. And if I now zoom out and play this back, the footage is nice and stable, but you can see these little jitters going on. Right, so you can kind of see these little twitches going on right here is one and this is where the footage is stable but because the frames themselves are blurry it just kind of looks really odd. It's stabilized but just doesn't look very nice. For that Adobe After Effects has added the camera shake de-blur effect. The idea is that you apply it after your warp stabilizer effect and it will take out that motion blur out of those weird frames that give it that jittery feeling. So let's zoom all the way out and let's enable the effect. And this is where living on the edge and always being on the latest, latest version came back to bite me in the ass. For some reason, the camera shake de-blur effect works on some frames, but for other frames, I just get a really distorted, corrupted video output. And I just don't know why. All my graphics card drivers are absolutely up to date. I updated them an hour ago. Windows is fully patched. This is the latest version of After Effects. I've restarted my computer. I don't know what it is. I have not found any information online on how to fix this. This does sometimes happen with the bleeding edge versions of Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. Sometimes things just don't really work until a couple of weeks later. Either Nvidia releases a new graphics card driver and patch, which then might work for my GTX 1080, or Adobe releases a bug fix patch, which then fixes the issues for some of the users that are experiencing problems. But this means I can't show you how the camera shake de-blur effect really works because for me personally it just doesn't. But the concept is that it takes out that blurriness out of those weird frames that you get when you use the warp stabilizer. And then obviously once that blurriness is gone you will also get much better tracking if you use the motion tracking capabilities of Adobe After Effects. But you know, I hope you get the idea and if anyone knows how to fix this, please leave me some comments down below. I'd love to get this working, but hopefully this was enough to give you a good idea of how this effect is meant to work and hopefully they'll get it fixed up soon. And that is all there is to it. Obviously, Adobe also released a new version for Adobe Premiere Pro with some cool new features, but I'm going to cover those in a different video. I'm really trying to keep my videos to a more reasonable length and just give you a bit more frequent content if I can. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool visual effects and filmmaking tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.